Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. Welcome back to JJ's PC Build. You know it is, JJ, with you once again. And don't forget, if you want to see more of my videos, not see more of them, but if you want to encourage me to make more videos, please help me out by subscribing to the channel and putting a like on the video, and don't forget your notification bell. Today, we're going to have a little talk. Uh... I got a little tip off about the 9800X3D from AMD. It's a leak. We don't know if it's true or false, but we will talk about it. Um, I got an article that I picked up from Tech Power Up, and we're going to go ahead and go there and see what they got cooking. Okay, here's the article from Tech Power Up. We got the big cursor for you guys. Of course, this says. This was done on Saturday, the 26th, 2024. So this is Monday. It says AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D has the CCD on top of the 3D vCache die, not under it. That's what they're saying. Much of the Ryzen 7 9800X3D teaser materials from AMD has the reoccurring buzzwords 3D reimagine, causing us to speculate what could be. 9550 Pro is a reliable source with hardware leaks, says that AMD has redesigned the way the CPU complex die, the CCD, and the 3D vCache die, the LD3 or L3D, are stacked together. Past generations, past generations, we know that, like the 7800X3D, of the X3D processors, such as the 5800X3D, Vimeer X, and the 7800X3D, the Raphael X, the L3D is stacked on top of the CCD. It would stack above the central region of the CCD, that has the on die 32 megs of L3 cache, while blocks of structural silicon would be placed on top of the edges of the CCD ha that have the CPU cores with these structure silicon blocks performing the crucial task of transferring heat from the CPU cores to the IHS above. This is about to change. Uh-oh, looks like AMD's doing something different. This might be why everybody should be waiting. Just just a hint. Everybody should be waiting for the 9800X3D before you decide to buy. Now, now hoping that AMD doesn't do like Intel did and jack the prices up above $600. I say above because you know it's going to go up. And, you know, the testing results that came out from many reviewers, didn't, it didn't turn out to be as great as everybody thought it did. But some people, some people are swearing that, you know, it's kind of better. You know, the Ultra series is kind of better. Like they say, it's like the 15th gen or whatever. But most of your reviewers, your big time reviewers are saying this. It doesn't meet up to the expectations that Intel put out there in their review, their preview of what it's supposed to be. Don't know if it's a motherboard issue. Could be a motherboard issue. It could be a um, coding issue to where it's supposed to keep up on the specs. But do understand, Intel, they decided to um, discontinue the hyper-threading SMT off of their CCDs or their cores so or their performance cores or however you want to call it but from what it's looking like Intel or AMD's taking a different step on the, the X3D processors they're reimagining the processor reimagined but this is a leak so let's hope the leaks are right you know if the leaks are right AMD has inverted the CCD L3D stack with the 9000X3D series, such as the Zen 5 CCD, is now on top. The L3D is below it. Basically, they took the, the cores and stacked underneath 
the cache. So instead of the heat going through the cache, causing issues to where they have to uh, lower the amount of wattage and, you know, lower the, the specs of the, the processor, now stacking the, the V-cache underneath, they're hoping that the heat transfer through the IHS will go directly out instead of it going through the V-cache. I think that's brilliant. I really do. I think that's brilliant because now that would make more sense of how they were saying that uh, the 9000, 9000X 3D series was overclockable. That's what I've been hearing. But now this makes more sense of what they're planning. So hopefully November the 7th when they come out, we all can see the improvements. And, you know, Intel has a lot to worry about right now because if they do this, they're, they're going to wind up, they, if they do this and it works out great for, you know, the gamers and, you know, people doing production, you know, creative work, production work and all that. That means any processor, any processor, they can stack it underneath so they can increase the V-cache to whatever size they want. That's going to make that, pro, you know, make the... CCDs run a lot faster and more efficient because now they got more cooling to those CCDs. Wow, this is just, I mean, this is just too much to take in. But, you know, so the CPU cores now dissipate heat to the IHS as they do regular 9000 series processors without the 3D V cache technology. The way we imagine they achieve this is by enlarging the L3D to align with the size of the CCD and serve as a kind of base tile. Yeah, I can see that. The L3D would have to be peppered with the TSVs that connect the CCDs to the fiberglass substrate below. I don't see where they would have a problem with that especially when you know it's like gives them like an advantage in in a sense it'll give them an advantage to you know to get better performance with less heat and also to overclocking capabilities and the only difference i see would be the amount of wire they would have to use more to go through the v cache to go to the board so but i don't see that being a problem neither because it'd still be the same amount either way you look at it. We know where AMD is going with this in the future. Right now, L the L3D base tile contains the 64 megs of 3D V cache that gets appended to the 32 meg Undy L3 cache. But in the future, probably with Zen 6, the AMD could design the CCD with TSVs, even for the per core L2 cache. I'll be damned. So, let's go back to the main screen. So, from what it's looking like, and I'm bringing this video to you guys today because I want you guys to understand. I just caught on to this, and this is something we have to talk about. Okay, now I know a lot of owners of the 7800X 3D, they're going to be tickled about because what's come down to it is that you know they want to be able to have a base clock that they can deal with like you know I mean if the base clock is set at 3.6 gigahertz but now they can advance the boost clock like at 5.2 5.3 5.0 if they can get it up to 5.8 gigahertz on the boost clock that would be really a reimagining X3D because their current X3D processors don't go up that high. So by them reimagining it, the spectrum widens. So by widening the spectrum, you can get better performance with having more lanes and be able to get more power out of your processor and lowering the heat at the same time and plus have the advantage too of undervolting and then overclocking. Undervolt and overclock. 
Me, I would undervolt the processor and then overclock the, um, how can I say it? Overclock the frequency. So I would try to get the max frequency out of it, having it undervolted so it's not heating up, but it's giving you more efficient power. Having less power, giving you more efficient power, less power. I know that don't make sense to some people, but that's the way I got my processor right now. It's undervolted. I got the voltage down to 1.1 continuous all day long. Stays at 1.1, no matter how much stress I put on to the piece, the CPU. Stays at 1.1. Because I got it locked in on a negative voltage curve. Took me some time balancing the curve out to get it right there to keep it continuous at 1.1, which only allowed the processor to go up to um, 91 watts. It's not bad. So, doing that, I got it capped at 91 watts, 1.1 volt, and the FPS is, you know, three to 400 FPS. The max FPS I did without a load was 12 to 1400 FPS. With the load, I'm in between 120 up to about 300, almost 400 FPS. And that's at 1080p uh, ultra settings. So. I don't mind 1080p ultra settings works for me any day. I know everybody likes 1440p and 4K. I could do 1440p if I get me a new monitor. But right now, the cost of the monitor, I got two monitors for the price of one 1440p monitor. So I'm running two monitors. Runs great with the 4070. So I'm able to keep the temperature down of the CPU at around an average of 60 degrees Celsius. And the temperature of the GPU keeps on around uh, average temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. So they both are pretty much in line with each other in the, the temperature. I'm still getting 100% out of the, the GPU and I'm only getting like 20 to 30% out of the CPU. That's real good. That's where you want to keep it. You know, everybody's like thinking, well, Jay, what about bottlenecking? I don't worry about bottlenecking because it's below 20%. I just say overall on 1080p, it's below 20%. Now, if it was a above 50% to 100% bottlenecking, then I would worry about it. But as long as it's below 20%, I don't worry about the bottlenecking. It doesn't matter to me whatsoever. The game doesn't stutter. The games I play don't stutter. Um, I have no artifacting. It runs smooth. I don't worry about anything. I got DLSS, I got, you know, I got access to a lot of perks, but not a lot is needed. I can run, you know, many of things. I mean, if I want ray tracing, I got ray tracing. If I want rasterization, I got rasterization. Don't put down the 4070. This has got the GDR6X. Not the new one that NVIDIA put out. No, it doesn't need it. But anyway, looking at this 9000X 3D processors, looks like there's a future on how AMD's reimagining the X3D. And if they reimagine it and give you a lot of headroom, then a lot of people are going to be trading in their Intel processors for this new one. Guarantee it. Wow. I mean, it's just amazing. And I want you guys to be a part of that amazingness. I'm going to try to see if I can get my hands on it. Maybe AMD would be nice enough to send me one. But if they don't, then I'm going to have to see how much it costs. Then I'm going to have to save up. And then we're going to have to get it. And then we're going to have to get a decent motherboard that's going to run that 9800X3D to its 100% fulfillment. So, but I'm going to be very choosy on the motherboard. Because I want the motherboard to get 100% from that CPU without having any problems with the the um, the RAM the system RAM 
I don't want to be able to have any bottlenecking with the system RAM. From what I'm seeing with the Intel processors, some people, they use 7200 microtransfers. Seems to run okay. But then they run it past the 8000 mic microtransfers, and it doesn't seem like Intel CPUs are keeping up. And it doesn't seem like AMD CPUs are keeping up with the 8000 microtransfers neither. Maybe it's because of the Infinity Fabric, who knows, but I think that's one thing they need to have a look at. And hopefully, hopefully, the 9800X3D will fix all those issues. But when they're talking about 10,000 microtransfers on the system RAM, and with that new CU DIM, that new on onboard clock, uh, DDR RAM, who knows? Maybe it'll do some good. Maybe it won't. But time will tell. We won't know until after November the 7th. So I'm going to wait it out and see what's going on. And then when it comes out, I'll do a follow-up on that processor. So, but that's all I got for you today, guys. And I hope you understand. You know, it looks like we might have a light at the end of the you know the tunnel here so let's hope it turns out good and if it does then let's hope that it's going to be better than what intel just put out now i'm not bashing intel i looked at 12 12 benchmarks from 12 different people 12 different ways they benchmark and come down to it all the 7800 x3d is still king just to tell you until the 9800X3D comes out and then got a new crown. Unless Intel can pull a hat trick, I doubt that they're going to have something that's worth a value for you. But $600 for a CPU that can't keep up with the 7800X3D, which is at $400, you know, I'm just estimating the price, but big difference. A couple hundred dollar difference. Because if AMD puts out that processor at a $400, $450, then imagine spending a couple hundred dollars on a decent motherboard that runs very well, equaling to the same price as the Ultra 9 285K. So basically you get two pieces into one. That seems like a better deal to me if AMD decides to do that. Like I said, time will tell. But anyway, we're at the end of the video, guys. And as, if this is your first time here, subscribe. Put a like on the video. And also, too, hit that notification bell so you know when I post the next video. Until the next time and the next video. You know what it is, and we'll see you on the next one.